Hi everyone, welcome back. Have no clue what's going on with um, Facebook Slides lately. I'm sure we're probably not the only ones. So where we're zooming, building the bow. Um, during the broadcast interruption, I went and got my fluff board, which is just a cutting board with a C hook in it and a nail. So we can show you how to do the fluff. Um, so I am just going to cut and do my last one. I could have built the bow, but I was like, nah, I'll show you. So we're doing the last one, and this will be seven and a half inch tails with a three and a half inch loop. And then that will finish <coughs> our bow. So let me see. There we three and a half inches. So it should come in just under your other one. Let's go. We need to just go away. Let me look at this one. Three and a half, seven and a half inch tail. And then I'll show you how to fluff it on the board. So you can actually see it being fluffed. And it's sometimes kind of hard to see it on the reef. So that one's done. A uh, pipe cleaner. Got one of those. So I'm going to pick this up. It's all neatly stacked in the Bodabra. You're going to take your pipe cleaner and just kind of put it right in between all of those. And then just twist. One, two, three, four, five. Bodabra is now out of the way. Okay, buffing. So you guys always ask. This one's a little harder because you can't really put your C hook and then fasten your wire down. So I'm gonna try to do this as good as I can. It's not gonna be 100% great. Let's see if I can get it, try to hook it under where I have. Can I get you under? There we go. I just basically ran it under the same pipe cleaner that's here. So when you fluff your bows, your tails and your loops go in opposite directions. So you start at the bottom. So here's our tail. Here's our loop. Other side. So we have our tail here. So we're going to pull our tail up and our loop down. So this should put them completely opposite of one another. So we have loops here, tails here. Same thing on the bottom because we have our tail here, we're gonna pull our loop down and our tail up. So it goes next to our loop. Same thing here. I'm just trying to get it all unstacked. And so we're pulling this to the side and our loop here. So you're just gonna kinda go back and forth as you pull down the next one. It's gonna go the exact same way. So we're going loop to the side here. Loop this way. Then next one down. We're taking our tails and going up, loops down here. We're going loops up, or tail up, and loop to the bottom. Or no, wait, sorry. Every time I look and I see my loop already there, I'm like, wait, I went the wrong way. So, here are our loops. Here are our tails. And then we keep going. Here's our loop. So we're gonna go tail and loop pull our tails in the opposite direction. And then here, we're gonna go here. And then here, we are going to go completely to the side. And then this is where you make all of your adjustments. You can pull all your ribbons to put all the arcs back in them. You wanna fluff them to where they look presentable to you. How do you want your loops? Where do you want your tails to fall? Do you like green next to green? Do you want to move the stripe over? It's 
completely up to you. So we're just kind of building our bow. Deborah, what you mean by it's loops on one side and tails on the other, so. You're pulling them completely. Opposite of each other. Yeah, so we'll see like, here I have the tails completely opposite. The loops are also completely opposite. I've repositioned them because I'm just fluffing and I'm moving, you know, my tails around where I want them to go. Like I'm out this one on the other side of this. Nope, I want it here. So now I'm just fluffing the way I want it to fall. And there we go. So now, this is where I'm like, you're just gonna take it and kind of mess with it. Put this on the floor. Yeah, Dizzy, it's kind of like an X. Yep. Just like an X. Your bows are opposite each other and your tails are opposite Your tails each other. are completely opposite. So now, okay, I'm going to take one of my inner um, pipe cleaners and I'm just gonna grab it Twist it the five times, right here. Thanks for catching that. Just push it that way. Because when I do this, it's gonna go, and it'll knock the whole thing off. Thanks, Steve. Okay. So, here's my bow. There's my bow. Bow's already done. It's gonna basically sit right here. So you kinda wanna look, if you're gonna have your sign, you kinda don't want your tails hanging over your sign because then you're going to just fight with them. So I feel like I'm looking, holding a flower bouquet. <laughs> so we're going to do it here because I just have like a loop and my tails are kind of going off to the side. So all I'm doing is going right over where I just cut my pipe cleaner off because I know that my pipe cleaner was um, secured to the frame. So I'm using the exact same frame placement. You don't want to pull too hard because then all that fluffing you just did on your bow just all went to waste. So I think we were able to salvage most of it. We'll probably still end up fluffing a couple more things, but for the most part, it looks weird until you get the rest of everything else in. All so. my dahlias said love all the greens. I know, right? I love all the different textures and colors and patterns. So now we're going to actually attach our sign. So we're going to use two pipe cleaners with a staple gun, making sure that your sign is a quarter inch thick. So I'm just going to flip these over and use my staple gun then I don't have to worry about doing it with um, the little adhesive ties that you have to secure with um, glue. So there's those two. I just kind of twist it to make sure they don't come out. And we'll do the same on this side. And I'm going to probably cut the um, The sign holder off. Yep. Let's see if we can. Margarita. She's not the only one. What's Probably that? put there where you said. I think we need a class on bow and fluff. Bow and fluff. Yeah. It's really about that hard. You just gotta practice. So the perfect time is if you have your bow maker, go to Dollar Tree and grab like five dollars worth of Dollar Tree ribbon and just practice. Just Stack them all on top of each other and uh, get really good at practicing. So I'm going to cut the sign off because you can't see that anyway. Okay, there we go. So go ahead and slide There we go. 
pull those through. And take that off. And now we're just going to position this. You want to make sure that it's nice and tight up under the bow, but not so much that... You lose it. Um, not that you lose it, it's just that um, the tails in it start to interfere with your your sign, right. the wording on your sign. So if you have a lot of wording on your sign or it's really big, you're always trying to push your bow tails out of the way. Mm -hmm. And I'm just cutting two of the inner ones that are going to be hidden by, move this one off. I'm taking the inner ones and I'm just trimming them. The ones that are really close to the bow, I'm taking those off and just twisting the pipe cleaners back down. And now I will attach this to the frame. Okay, let's make sure it goes under here over the other one. I'm trying to get it to go in between the wires on my frame. And this is really thick jute, so I'm trying to get it to go through the cream section. Actually, I actually think I want it on the other side. So hang tight. I'm trying to look at how the ruffle was laying. And it's like the pipe cleaner was going over the edge of the ruffle. Still trying to get it back through the cream. Hit the frame. Now I can make sure I'm doing the same thing on this side. So we we'll pull some of those cruffles out and I go right through the mesh. This is some thick mesh. It's just getting stuck on all the fibers and all the threads. So I don't want it to go too far down. So we can pull some of those cruffles out so that they kind of frame our sign. So June, um, yeah, we can explain. She says, uh, I think she's new. Uh, I missed a couple of her comments. Might have been when the broadcast interruption happened. Oh, yeah. Okay. She said, not, not sure what a cruffle is. Can you explain? Oh, cruffle is... It's when you take your deco mesh and you curl the ends. So you have curls on the ends and then you scrunch it to the middle so that the ends here have curls, but the middle is ruffled like or scrunched. Ruffle. Yeah. It's kind of like a curl and a ruffle together. And that's why it's called the cruffle. Or the woodland ruffle yep. or a half a dozen other names that are there. And I think somebody says it's based on how long your yeah. your deco mesh is, whether you're doing a woodland like a woodland ruffle or a cruffle. And I'm like, I don't have time for that. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's yeah. To me, they're the same. Janet, yeah, this is 10 inch mesh, cut to 25 inches. Okay. So now we're gonna go around and put some tails to the outer, just the outer ones only. So I'm leaving a couple of the inner ones for some other things. So I have the clovers, the white on, or not clovers, it is technically, um, white with green shamrocks, and then green with that really pretty um, glitter. These are cut to 13 inch pieces, and I'm going to alternate each of these Kay had asked, um, why is the sign so close to the bow? I, I can't see from my end. So. Oh. I like it closer to the bow just so that it's kind of snug. It just kind of creates a home for it. And then it gives me some space at the bottom to add, um, I have some other embellishments that we're going to be adding to that. So it just gives me some space to do that. You don't have to. You can bring your sign down, but then your bow kind of floats out there by itself. So I like to keep them somewhat close together. So I'm going to be alternating 
and all I do is fold them in half to find middle and I kind of pinch them and then I put them in. I don't undo my pipe cleaners. I just add these to the existing pipe cleaners and I kind of make them fan out towards the bottom so they kind of radiate outward. So I'm going every other one will have a different color. And again, it'll kind of cut down all the lime and add that emerald green to it. So we should be able to get through this fairly quick. And I just like the cruffle if I want it to be kind of full, but flat. This is just a, it's a poly jute deco mesh? It is a, they call it a jute poly mesh. I actually wrote that down because I was like, I'm not going to remember that. So it's kind of like Craft Outlet's natural and cream. It's the same consistency. This one seems a little thicker though. Like it's a little bit better made, not as thin. Um, like the red with the tan we did, Steve, mm -hmm. for the angels. Right. Uh, the blue and the cream that yeah. they have, yeah. it's that consistency. Yeah, if you, this is a jute, like a poly jute or a jute poly burlap match. So you can't use a wood burn tool on it because no. it smokes once you get to the cream section. No, it would just, yeah, I guess it would. Yeah. I was like, isn't it all the same way? No. Well, there's some, like, in between, there's some natural fibers in here that isn't plastic. So it would start to smoke on those, too. So it just makes the process go pretty quick. Um, if you know that it's starting to fray quite a bit, just take some E6000. You can get it at Walmart, Joann's, Michael's. It's a spray and you can go and spray your entire wreath, particularly along the edges where it's fraying, and it should minimize. It's like basically spray glue, but it doesn't leave your wreath feeling stiff like glue does. It still keeps it soft. So we did product test that. I was pretty happy with the results. So I can recommend that one. Product tested and approved. Right? Mm -hmm. And now we're running a test. We just started the UV protectant science experiment in our backyard. So we just took a whole bunch of different types of deco mesh and kind of created the most ugliest wreath possible. But all it is is a science experiment to see does UV protectant really work? Which I find interesting because when you read the directions, because I wanted to make sure we were doing it based by product instructions, it says that you have to spray your wreath every three to five weeks. So if you spray it initially for your customer in three to five weeks, if they don't spray it again, it's going to be like all the other wreaths out there. But we live in the desert, so we have the extreme weather what do you call it, like weather element experiment. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of sun. So we're just going to leave it, sit out there and check on it, and then take pictures of it once a week and show you which one is doing I'm, its thing. Yeah. Or they're both doing the exact same thing and save your money, don't <laughs> you be protected. Because it's, I think it's $10 for a bottle, and I bought the NASA protectant because it was the high, most highly rated one on Amazon. So I was like, okay, we'll pick the one that got the highest ratings, and we'll go for that. Um, Audrey asked, mm -hmm. um, do you not put your business card on the back of the sign anymore? Remember how we used to? I used to. I haven't been doing that lately. I don't know why I suddenly stopped, but yeah, I just, I did. Mm -hmm. I stopped doing that. Oh, that one's an inner. We should be doing it again because if the customer wanted to get a hold of us, they could find it in the wreath. Yeah. yeah. It depends though. Like on this one, I don't know if you'd be able to see it just because we did the cruffle method, 
and the, the interior is so dense. I'll look once we finish this one and see, can I even see the back of the sign? Because if you can't, there's almost no reason to put it there because they wouldn't be able to see it anyway. Okay, we're done with this. So I'll show you what it looks like. I'm gonna make sure they all fluff outward. So this is what it looks like. And no, you wouldn't be able to really see the sign. So I'll show you. Mm -hmm. There's that. Mm -hmm. There's the back. Mm -hmm. You'd only be able to really see the middle. Right. So um, because I'm going to be adding a lot of different embellishments to this because it's more of an Irish blessing, little less St. Patrick's Day. Um, the only element really I'm playing with is the shamrocks. So I'm gonna do minimal half bows, but then we're gonna come back in and we're gonna add in possibly some carnations. I have artificial clover. We have a couple fun shamrock picks of different colors. Um, different sizes. And then I even have these ones. Mm -hmm. Don't even know where these came from because the price tag is removed. Looks like Joanne's. And then we're um, also going to do deco mesh. So, yep. yeah, that's the reason why it's going to be basically on the ones that are just green. Because obviously, if we take this and add this to the white, it doesn't really stand out. So, I'm only going to be adding the half bows which are just cut to 15 inch pieces. You bring the tails together from the top to where I'm pinching it is exactly two inches. And then you will place this in every single one of the white with the green shamrocks. So I'm gonna twist those five times and then we're trimming it. We're trimming the pipe cleaner from this one. And then you're tucking the pipe cleaner tips to the back so that that sharp edge isn't in the front. It's behind the half bow. And then I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Let me get this one to fluff. It looks like this one here. So I'm alternating the regular emerald green with the lime green one just in the ones that are, um, where did I put that? I did put that on that one. Wow, okay. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to improvise because I need, I put it in the wrong one. So I'm gonna fix this mistake, which is just run another pipe cleaner up right where the other one was. Which is here. Making sure we're around our frame. So I have my pipe cleaner back and I am going to untwist this because I put it in the wrong one put it in the one I said it wasn't going to put it in and then I cut the pipe cleaner off. Mm. So it happens. Yep. There we go. Actually I don't even need to do that because I'm going to leave that there anyway in case I need it. Um, I think I needed to cut them anyway because if we add floral or clover, it has to be gone anyway. So you're doing the white over the green? The white's supposed to be on the green. Gotcha. Yeah. Didn't do that the okay, first time. Yeah, I said I really like the half bows. Yep. I do too. But I'm trying to break out of always doing the same thing. So I'm trying to look for some other variety. I don't really like just doing... Um, like some people will do two different types of two and a half inch bows or two different types of inch and a half and then they leave the middle open. Mm -hmm. And to me that, it's the OCD side of me that says something has to go in the middle. It just is unfinished. I mean, it looks great, but 
I'm like, you just need something. So that's where I came up with half bows because it finishes that middle section. Okay, making sure these are going on the grain only and we're alternating lime green with the darker emerald green. So, like I said, it happens, mistakes happen. I do it all the time. If I'm creating at home, I don't really have a plan, so I'm just kind of winging it. So if I was to do that, and I'd just be like, oh, okay, just run into the pipe cleaner through there, and it's not what I meant to do. Okay. This one here. Am I in your way? Nope. Okay. Was that in the way? Yeah, I could see the post. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe when you um, had to readjust and get everything turned back on. Mm -hmm. It's funny, it's almost like a reboot. Turn everything off, turn everything back on. Right? Yeah. We'll have to get good at learning how to splice it all together. That will be the skill we learn in 2020. Yes. So when we do a broadcast interruption, <laughs> we can splice part one and part two back together. on. So it's one video when we post it on YouTube. and There's a way to do it. Yeah. We just have to figure it out. I'm somewhat tech savvy, but not that tech savvy. It's, well, it's like mine. There's certain things I want to be tech savvy in and others I'm like, look, can I just hire someone to splice these? Because they can do it so much quicker than I can. The learning curve for me is a lot longer. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm loving the bows though. The bows are very full and very fluffy. I'm just pulling some of these cruffles out of the pits because they kind of get pushed in as you're going around. So this is the last one and then we'll add the fun embellishments like the um, carnations, the clover possibly. I know I want to put some flex tubing in because hey, I like making clovers out of those. Kate's on. Hi Kate. Counting Gail. She's probably working. She's doing the end of the year thing. So she's been pulling long, long hours. Fluff. Fluff this way. Okay. So that's it with all the half bows in. I'm gonna Let's see, so what are we going to use? Because I'm like, I have these, which I would need to take the ornament part off. Those can go in, those are kind of pretty. Um, one, and look, we have six, so that would be two. Do I want to kind of go every other one? One, two, and that one's just a waste. It's under the bow. Kay said she likes the inch and a half tails more than the two and a half because that's more mesh show. It's it's your it's your opinion, your option. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, Michelle asked, are there any other colors you would add besides green and white? I don't think so. You don't mm -hmm. really need to. Just different shades of green. Different really shades you. of green. Yep. Exactly. So let me look at this one. Macy, I like it if we glue it in because it's not going in far enough for me. So the nice thing is I'm going to take that extra pipe cleaner out and I'm going to just take the glue gun and bring this in a little closer because mm -hmm. if you try to use the hole that's in the clover 
it just it hangs down too far and you can see the lime green which I don't like I mean it's great but um, to me it doesn't need to be there so I'm gonna go all the way around putting a big dab of Gorilla Glue and then I'm kind of tucking it as soon as I can get my decomash unstuck um, oops just kind of tucking it in here yep so Linda, that'd pull be, it closer that, that would be a good color too but this one doesn't really have any gold in it like the sign nothing you really could. has any gold in it you could put gold in it though mm -hmm, you could she just sold one wreath that was green white and gold was it yeah had your pot of gold in it and had your oh that was last year i didn't sell it this year yeah you did you sold a st patrick's wreath earlier oh at christmas time yeah yeah but I think it was like really minimal. Yeah, but it um, still had little pops of gold in it. So I'm not going to put that there. I'm going every other one. So that's just going to be my layout. Every other one. So bringing all your cruffles forward. Just laying it on top of your two and a half, but tucking it. And then I got one here. And then, always an experiment because I never know. People are like, um, is there a way that we can get instructions of like what you're going to be making? And the answer is always no because I never know. Mm -hmm. Like, you guys are seeing me do this just like I would be doing it if I wasn't live. I just be kind of creating, just adding things. If I don't like it, take it out. If you do like it, let it sit. And I'm pulling my cruffles down so my bow is not too high. Taking the last pipe cleaner, I think that's right here. That's an inner. Moving that so it lets your bow kind of fall down a little bit more. Once you remove the pipe cleaners, your bow will settle where it's supposed to. Yep, Melanie. Yeah, we've done that too. She's done that. She glued gold coins to the wreath. Yeah, and I was going to do that. I pulled out the pot of gold. I had the gold coins. I had the leprechaun. I had all of that stuff. But because this is more of an Irish blessing and not an actual... It can work as a St. Patrick's Day, but you can also leave it up in your home if you are uh, Irish because it goes with your heritage, your home decor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let's see. I have a couple spots here in the front. Let me look. I will probably add the clover to my bow. So here's my phone. Can you see this, Steve? Yeah, I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay. Um, I have these little picklets. Let me see. Picklets. <laughs> yeah, picklets, because there's only like three. So I had used these before and I had put them in my bow. So I'm going to use that still. So I'm going to use lots of glue. And we are going to. Tuck that down. And I'm trying to break up the colors. This is more of like an olive green. So lots of Gorilla Glue. And we're going to go over here. And I'm just tucking those down into the bow. Do this one. This Cheryl, is... go ahead. Oh, go. Cheryl said, I miss you so much. It's so great to see you and hear Steve. Aww. Just uh, so busy these days. My husband and I are both pastors. Awesome. And we've been busy. We know about long hours lately. Kat, you are constantly in my thoughts. Sending you loves and hugs. Aw, thanks. Thank you, Cheryl. So see, we added some little picklets. Because it was just like one pick that I broke apart. Yeah. And then we can just add those little fun little sprigs of the clover. Let's see, we'll probably add that one here to the center. I'm just double checking, making sure. I don't want that one. 
not this one. So if it slants this way, means that we're gonna put glue on this direction, because yeah. that's the I'll direction. On one side. Yeah. So I try to just. And then that way it'll kind of stay snug in there. So that kind of makes our bow a little bit more festive with lots of shamrocks. Hi Debbie, hi Dinah, hi Lindy. Hope it's Dinah or Dina. Okay, um, let me look at these. These are from Dollar Tree. So I know Dollar Tree has some amazing, honestly, um, florals. So I might tuck some of these in closer to our sign. Like I like the way that one is. Um, there's nothing on that one. So I'm just placing them for now to see if I like where they look. If I like where they look, then I will go ahead and glue them in place. Okay, let's see. Let's try one more. Odds are when you're working with a lot of your embellishments is pairs of three. I'm trying to get this one to fill some of the empty. So let me show you what I see and you guys can tell me yay or nay. Should we use the carnations or I can try it with clover, like the real clover. What do you think? You guys like the carnations? I know this one side is kind of hidden from the ribbon. Which yeah. one? That one. Yeah. This one? Yeah. Oh yeah. And just filling. Yeah. Just little areas. Just because I had this one, mm -hmm. I like put one here. And then um, Melody said, love the green carnations. I think there's something to the green carnations because if you go into any of the St. Patrick's Day decor, you see the carnations in there. So I think it has something to do with that. Did is it clover? Well, you might add clover too, right? Maybe I'll we'll add clover and. You can do both. <laughs> Maybe. You just got to bring them up high enough. Let's see if we can do both. Oh, Deborah said uh, Dollar Tree has some white carnations with bits of green that would They do. Good. I saw those. I was like, mmm, do I want to get those? I'm just trying really hard not to overdo it and like uh, kind of kill the sign. Yeah, that looks good. We tucked in there with that. Just some little pieces. Like I'm just going with the little baby sprigs. Oh, I just said not a fan. Lynn said clover. Sharon said no to clover. So give okay. her a minute. Let her let her play so with it a little bit. This is what you guys can vote on, because nothing is permanent right now. Everything is just sitting. So I'm doing it for you guys to see. So that would be, and I would probably even do. This direction. So let's pull this down a bit. I'm trying to take the actual white clover and make sure it's not impacting the sign. So this is green carnations with clover. What do you think? Honest opinion. What do you think, else? Your honest opinion. Um, I like it. The carnation. Well, once I stand up, it doesn't affect the lettering. So, okay. no, it looks okay. So, if I do it this way? Yeah, it looks fine. But do you like it? Yeah. Or is it too much? No, I like both. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of the gals say they like the clover. Just the clover? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Because I was like, mm, when I take the carnations out, I'm like, they're kind of a funky color. So, let me do this one. Because this one's a little harder. See, Joan said the clovers look good with the carnations. Judy said clover and carnation looks good. Mm -hmm. um, I know, it's tough. It's a tough call, right? 
Oh, this one needs a little bit more. So. Kevin said, like both. Tracy said, love it. Well, let's look at the colors. Let's try this one. And Antoinette said, no clover or flowers. <laughs> I know, you can go either or. Yeah. So. Um, okay. So, this is carnations removed, but clover just kind of around the side. Uh, yes. You like that? Much better. Okay, so what happened to the carnations? You were like, that looks good. Well, the carnations do somewhat match the middle of the sign. Okay. Um, but the clover is not overstated. I think the carnations may were maybe a little bit too overstated. So. Okay. So yes, clover. Clover, yes. Well, I'm going to remove the pipe cleaners that are right here that I can see. So that was the whole point of, hey, now we'll just tuck these. And then we still have to do, um, okay. So we're gonna add clover, but let me add just a touch of the, um, cause I have those three ribbon spots at the bottom that we haven't done anything. So that's the one I wanna do um, some flex tubing in cause it's not overly crazy. So this is where it's kind of fun and you're the only one that knows that it happens. So usually I just create little loops and I think they're like, they're like two and a half inches. So I just sit here and go back and forth. So there's a three. So you could mix it and do three and four. I am, I always <laughs> do one four. Most people don't even know, but I know it's there. And hopefully if they'll look, this is kind of like that play on the four leaf clover because technically, None of the clovers on here are four leaf. None of them. Yeah. Judy said yes to the tubing. Hey, Gail's on. She She's like, oh home. my god. Wow, I finally got home, home from work. I know. Daisy, yeah, the clover complements the mesh. Yeah. And, um, Once I glue it, it'll actually go down a little further. Pat, yeah, the curls do stick out because it's called a cruffle, so it's got curls and ruffles. Yeah, one, two, this one's a three. You'll see when it's on the, the door. Yeah, once I finish this. So let me get this one in. Two. Trim this. Trim this out. Once we get that all, glued down, it'll all work. And they'll actually be in a different position because they'll be, I'll trim them down a little further. Like, why is this one sticky? There we go. It looks like it's way, way under the sign. It's like this one was tucked so far under the sign I couldn't see it. So, okay, and then the last one, we're doing a four. So this is my creator's little tweak. This one's got four. So this is my four leaf clover. And it's gonna attach right here under the bow. Why did I cut the pipe cleaner off on that one too? Again? Let's do it this way. We'll do reverse. And then we'll go down. So much easier. I think that's because this is where I had realized I had. Is this where I had done it? I don't know. And then I'll just trim this underneath. So the customer not, not, might not ever need, ever know, but but I know. But Kat knows. You guys yeah. all know. There's a four leaf clipper in that read somewhere, and they'll be like, they will look on every single like, is it on the print, on the ribbon, where is it? Let me know where we put it, or if they watch the video, they'll know where yeah. we put it. Kay said I made one of your tubing candy canes last month while I was dog sitting. Oh yeah. She made so many bundles. Yeah, Aww. it's a lot of bundles. It is. It's a lot of work, but it looks great when you finish. 
Okay, so let's take this out and make sure it's all pushed up. I want to give it as small a stem as possible. Sorry, carnations, not this design. Mm -hmm. So lots and lots and lots of glue. Let's get that ball off. Mm -hmm. And this is actually just going to stick to the deco mesh that is around our sign. And I'm trying to make it to where it's not like hanging over the sign like this one was. I am trying to keep it fairly close. So this one's a double, it goes to the left and right because it's filling up a bigger space. So much so we can attach you to our mesh but not impact our sign. You just enough to fringe. And we'll take this one, same thing. We're almost done. So I just usually use about an inch and a half and then I just kind of poke it through my deco mesh. And then not only that, the kind of clover that we have bordering the sign is really helping to kind of cover up the little hole that was in there from the sign. And I think we're done. We're ready to hang it. So I wanted this one to actually have a lot in it. Oh, you already took it down. Wow. Behind the scenes, man. So let's make sure it's on my hook. Let's fluff our bow. Yeah. Make sure it's not in the way so that we can still see our little white clover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the tall curls do kind of make it look like the sign is a little buried, but you want the sign to be a little buried in the in the wreath. Yeah. I mean, it's your preference too. If you want to make one and have the sign, you know, pull out a little bit more so it's further out. I like it because it's a darker type of a border, mm -hmm. and it's like black. I guess it's like lime green and the emerald green, so I kind of want it to look like it's shaded. So that's why I have it a little further set in there. And there we go. Everything else is done. What do you ladies think? I think. Can I get it off? Yeah. There we go. It's all ready for our two hole. So. David said beautiful. Lynn said beautiful. Libby said beautiful. What would you charge? I think I have this listed for 85. You won't see the picture. All you'll see is the Facebook Live. Facebook Live icon. So yeah, and I think last year I sold one that it didn't have half as much material in it, and the one that I sold last year at this time sold for eighty. So um, I just put just a little bit more in it. Like the one I did last year didn't have ribbons all the way around the outside. It was just like three different color deco mesh and a bow and a sign and the little shamrock sprigs. That was it. So um, hopefully you guys like it. If not, like Steve says, you know, if you want your sign to come out a little bit more, pull your sign out a little bit more. Um, I have a very small sign, so it's, what is it, four, four inches by 10. Mm -hmm. So it's not an overly big sign. So. It's just meant to be subtle, I think, right? Yep, sometimes subtle is better. Sometimes Less subtle is, is more. good. Well, that has a lot on it. It does. 
So yeah. Um, what questions do you have that I can answer for you? I love it. I was just saying, turned out beautiful. Love it. You're amazing. Thank you. Um, yeah, Kathy Mock said, awesome. I'm going to do one for my hubby. Awesome, Kathy. That would be good. See, and then you can put it out for St. Patrick's Day, and then you can still keep it in your house just for, because your husband's culture or heritage is Irish, so mm -hmm. it has a place in your home year-round. Uh, Deborah, we put all of our wreaths kind of all around our house. <laughs> And then when they sell, we just pop them off the wall and I have designated rooms. Like our guest room is all Christmas. So if I know a resold, I know exactly which room to go in and either open the closet. Because a lot of them I have hanging in my closet, just mm -hmm. like clothes. Mm -hmm. So they're just upper and lower closet racks. So we don't have a ton of inventory anymore. So no, it's kind of good. A lot. Yeah. yeah. I just said this is stunning. Great wreath for St. Patrick's Blessing. Uh, now this one's going to hang on your front door. You're so fun to watch and create. Thank you for your most valuable time and talent. You're welcome, Audrey. Everybody's putting the green shamrocks on there. <laughs> There's an icon for green shamrocks? Yeah. I'm like only, I don't know how they do it. They must be going into an actual, like, under no. the comment. You just type in shamrock and a shamrock pops up and you just click on it. I didn't do that. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, private group Sunday. Basic wreath makers tool. I'm going to show you what you should have if you're thinking about starting and then some higher end tools you can purchase later down the line when you you're starting to see that this is turning into more of a part-time full-time business and it's no longer a hobby. Things that'll make your life a whole lot easier and things that you know those could be things that you ask for for your anniversary uh, for your birthday. Melody asked real quick, where did you get the clover? That's the last question. Uh, let me look. This was from, Joanne. yeah, in 2013. Joanne's. But Joanne's. they should still have it. Yeah. Or look at Michael's. I'm like flocking to Michael's for their uh, greenery lately because they have gorgeous greenery. So um, don't know what we're going to be doing next week. Uh, we might be moving into spring and doing a spring kind of themed wreath or we might just have to look and figure out when it, do you guys know when is Easter this year? Because sometimes it's in March, sometimes it's beginning April, sometimes it's end of April. When is Easter? Check really quick. Because uh, you need to make sure that you have some Easter in there. So I would be doing April 12th. April 12th which means that you need to have that in your shop by March 12th. So yeah, we'll probably, we still have some time. So we'll probably do something, I don't know. We might do something fun, something that we haven't done before. Like, I don't know, I'll have to see. And St. Patrick's Day is the March 17th. Yeah, it's always the 17th. Never changes. Yep. Okay, everyone, well, have a great weekend. And I'll see my private group on Sunday at 5. And the rest of you have a great weekend. Talk to you soon. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye. You make me stand here while you're texting? Yeah, for a whopping two seconds.